Hello everyone, Winston here, welcoming you back to another episode of Watchtower Examination. I'm coming to you in pain, but I've decided to shoot this video today because I'm constantly putting off doing videos because of pain and it just is happening every day. And if I were in bed on my back, I would still be in pain, albeit a little less bearable, a little more bearable, a little less severe. But I am here today because of another pain, heartbreak. I watched a video by Kim, Kim doing a video at the Mike and Kim channel entitled something like the Watchtower has claimed another victim. And I, I tuned into the video and she started speaking about an ex-Jehovah's Witness who was interviewed at another YouTube channel. And as I watched the video, as I was watching, I was thinking that Kim was going to be speaking about an ex-Jehovah's Witness who has gone back to the organization. So I thought she was suggesting that the organization has claimed another victim, has plucked back another ex-Jehovah's Witness into the organization. But as I watched the video, I was to learn that the gentleman that I was looking on doing that interview subsequently killed himself. Put that into perspective. The, the title of Kim's video is that the Watchtower has claimed another, another, meaning that this is not an isolated case of a religious organization that is leading people to their death. It's a difficult period in my life. I have finally been given a date for my surgery at the public hospital. That will be October, Friday, October 7. But I'm trying to raise the funds to do the surgery privately because the thought of being in pain like this every day until October, while my health continues to deteriorate because of it, is not a nice thought. But it's not just my personal life that is a dark period for me. I do not watch the news in my country anymore. I just tune it out. You tune into the news and it's, you, you're, you're constantly being fed on a diet of crime and violence. In my community of Montego Bay, there is a local newspaper that seems to have on the front page of every issue some murder. It is depressing. I do not read the newspapers anymore. I do not tune into TVJ and CVM TV nightly news anymore. I used to listen to a program called Nationwide every Friday evening. I love the cover story with Cliff Hughes. I don't listen anymore. It is just depression everywhere you turn. And so, believe it or not, I watch more international news, in particular, in particular, United States news. And in recent weeks, it is so depressing to turn the television on because 
you move away from someone going to a store and killing 10 people because they're black. And you believe that that is horrible enough. And just before you can get over that, it is an 18-year-old who goes into a school and kills 19 children and two teachers. And yes, I am talking about the Watchtower. Yes, this is Watchtower examination. I am not delving into current affairs. I am making a point about the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And so you tune into the news day in, day out, day in, day out, because the United States is finding it difficult to move on and it is understandable. 19 children murdered. Their parents cannot identify them because of the severity of the damage that is done to them from the bullets of that weapon. They cannot be identified. They have been decapacitated. I can't even pronounce the word. They cannot be identified. That's how seriously they have been damaged. And so the United States is grippling with these many deaths coming from criminals, people with evil intent. While a religious organization over the years has been boasting about the children who die under their watch because of their religious dogma about not taking blood transfusion. He died in June of 1992. And so I watched a video by Lloyd Evans commenting on Mark Sanderson instructing elders about how they should interfere in the work of doctors to recommend life-saving procedures for their children. And I'm going to play a clip of something that Lloyd Evans said that is for me the most important point in that video. Well ideally as HLC brothers we want to try to avoid going to court whenever possible. If there's any way around it we want to avoid it. I'm going to take that sentence and change the words. Imagine if instead of saying this, Mark Sanderson had said, well, ideally, as human beings, we want to try to avoid a child dying wherever possible. If there's any way around it, we want to avoid it. Need I say more? Need I say more? Shouldn't the saving of the lives of these children be the most important thing on the mind of the governing body? The lives of these children are not as important to them as protecting their false doctrine. This is why even in Pain, I cannot put this off anymore. Because while we are looking on a medical issue, uh, whatever kind of issue we may choose to call it, it is a serious spiritual issue. Because behind all of this... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Who is the spirit of death behind this organization? Watch the video by Kim. Watch the video that she pointed to. Listen to this man explaining what happened to him when he left the Watchtower organization and how it eventually led him to take his own life. As I went on through with different judicial committees and I saw how people were just basically a number with the way that the elder's manual had you handle certain cases, it made me sick. I was marked. So I stepped down as an elder and I wrote a letter why I was stepping down. I was asked if I thought that the governing body was the mouthpiece and under direction from Jehovah God. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. They have tried to come between my wife and my children, saying that my children are fatherless because I don't go to the meetings that I no longer believe in their doctrine. I'm shunned, uh, been shunned by people that I've been friends with that I, I truly love. I don't have a problem with the rank and file Jehovah's Witness. Still love them. My wife had been approached by elders and she was told that she should leave me because I'm mentally diseased. I spoke to Jehovah just before I stepped out here and I asked him, please don't abandon me. <laughs> if I've ever needed you, I need you now. It's the 2021 annual meeting and Samuel Heard has something to say to Jehovah's Witnesses and oh my, does he need God's help? He needs the help of God more than he has ever needed the help of God before because he is about to do a very important work. And so he needs the Heavenly Father to be with him like he has never been with him before because of a very important message that he needs to tell Jehovah's Witnesses. Why? Well, it's because of all of these beautiful sheep that I have the privilege to speak to for 19 minutes. So I want to make the most of these 19 minutes because sometimes we have to make adjustments. Now, you may have heard of a few adjustments in our understanding of things already today, and there could be more adjustments that will have to be made later on. I spoke with my brother about this, and he has a very positive takeaway, because these men are so humble. Isn't it commendable, he thinks, that they are admitting that they made a mistake? That's the positive takeaway that my brother and the typical Jehovah's Witness has about this. When, in effect, Samuel Heard is coming to them to tell them that what we taught you as the truth we are going to change. Now, you may recall that we used to think a certain way some 10 years ago about the following matter. We felt that some of the anointed would survive Armageddon, 
and move right on into the paradise with the other sheep and maybe stay there for a given time and then be brought to life in heaven. That, because that is what we thought. We thought that, you know, some of the anointed on earth will remain and they will move over into paradise. And maybe we thought and maybe speculation, possibility, we are not quite sure. Why are they not quite sure when the Lord has revealed to us what is going to happen? Why are the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses not quite sure? Why are they thoughting? We thought. And pardon my language, pardon my English. Why are they thoughting? Why are they thinking? Why are they using maybe when the Lord has revealed everything in the scriptures? Samuel Heard was to present to Jehovah's Witnesses the most bizarre of reasons why. But uh, as uh, we understand it, some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. We only see light when it's Jehovah's time to reveal light. I saw that one and I laughed. I found it ridiculous. I saw that one. I also saw this one. Well, for many years, our understanding was that these were good people. In fact, these were Jehovah's people. These were Jehovah's Witnesses. So it's obvious that we have some thinking to do. We have to look for a different explanation. I thought about how ridiculous that is. I wondered how on earth could Jehovah's Witnesses accept that. I saw this one. Now it's true, some might say, well, yes, but at times, we look back over the hundred years, there were times they got excited about a certain year or time, and the end didn't come at that time. But just imagine, if you had a watchdog, and that dog barks in the middle of the night, and you get up and there's nothing there, do you shoot the dog? <laughs> that one has been a source of humor for so many people for so long. But behind, I was going to say behind the humor. But the thing would be funny if it weren't so serious. This is the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses coming to Jehovah's Witnesses to explain to them why they have been repeatedly wrong. And they come with this ridiculous thing. And I did a video before speaking to what I believe is the most serious aspect of all of this. It, it only proves that the dog is doing what you want it to do. Hmm? That the governing body is literally just doing what Jehovah's Witnesses want them to do, lie to them. But I heard Samuel Hurd's statement before, but it did not dawn on me what Samuel Hurd said until I watched it a second time, and I don't know if it dawned on you what Samuel Hurd actually said. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. Samuel Heard had the temerity to tell Jehovah's Witnesses that the reason they taught them the wrong thing, the reason they never understood it, the reason they never saw 
What the Bible is saying is that Jehovah did not permit them to see. They have read it many, many times over more than 150 years. So for more than 150 years, Jehovah did not permit them to see what I saw. Jehovah has not, did not permit the leaders of the Watchtower organization to see what is in the Bible, even though they read over it many, many times. That is the reason, that is the excuse that the governing body is giving to Jehovah's Witnesses as the reason they taught them the wrong thing and asked them to spread it as the truth for How long? Jehovah did not permit us to see it even though we read over it many, many times. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see even though we read over it many, many times. Jehovah did not permit them to see what is written in the Bible even though they have read over it many, many times. God did not give them permission to see it. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. That is the message that he spoke to God about this morning. To ask God not to abandon him as he goes out and tell a lie on God. He spoke to Jehovah this morning to beg Jehovah not to abandon him as he goes out there to tell a lie on Jehovah. To Jehovah's Witnesses. And all of this, all of this that is happening is not on them. It is not to be blamed on them. Do you know who's to be blamed? We can't see it until Jehovah puts the light on it. I forgot that part. When I did the video, I actually forgot that part. It's during shooting that I played again and was reminded of that all-important Heart. The man actually went on to double down to say they cannot see it until Jehovah puts the light on it. So Jehovah put darkness on it as it were. Jehovah did not shed the light on it until 2021 so that the governing body can finally see it. The governing body loves to get together and discuss the Bible. And when those Bibles come out on the table, and when the brothers bring their research in, and they're starting to search the scriptures and analyze the scriptures, you see the happy smiles on their faces. The brothers love discussing spiritual things. We can't see it until Jehovah puts the light on it. They can't see it until Jehovah has put the light on it. But here's a question. So Jehovah did not put the light on it. So what do they do? They put their own interpretation on it, put it in print, and ask Jehovah's Witnesses to go and spread it door to door as the truth, and then come to tell them now that, oh, we made a mistake. And through all of this, my brother and Jehovah's Witnesses are very impressed at how humble these men are. They ought to be commended for the wonderful thing that they just did. All right. So Jehovah 
did not permit them to see because Jehovah refused to put the light on it so that they could see. Jehovah refused to put the light on it until 2021 so that the governing body could finally see because Jehovah did not want them to see it until 2021. So, finally, Jehovah puts the light on it. Finally, the governing body can see. Would you like to see what they see now that they believe that Jehovah has shone the light on it? Now that they believe that Jehovah has permitted them to see? Would you like to see what they now see? And what I'm about to reveal to you today, Jehovah is behind it. Not the governing body, not any human here on the earth, but Jehovah God. It is not the governing body that's revealing what he's about to reveal. It is God himself. It is God who is to be credited for what he is now going to reveal to Jehovah's Witnesses, now that Jehovah has shone the light on it, now that Jehovah has permitted them to see. Let's see what they see. He helps us to see things. Now, uh, you may recall Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. You've read it many times. I have too. But... Uh, Notice what it says, even though we felt a little different earlier on when we read it. Jehovah helps us to see things. We're familiar with Matthew 24. We're going to read it again. We've read it many times before. Even though we felt a little different, meaning though, even though we came to a different conclusion. Stop interrupting him, Winston. Let him continue. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, immediately after, 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 after. Do you see that, Jehovah's Witnesses? Is Jehovah permitting you to see the word after? Apparently, Jehovah is still Till not permitting Samuel Heard to see the word after. Now remember this, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will beat themselves in grief. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a great trumpet sound. Now note the following. And they will gather his chosen ones together from the four winds from one extremity of the heavens to the other extremity. Now, do you see the point? We understand now that all of Christ's anointed brothers will be in heaven with him before 
Armageddon starts. Immediately after the tribulation, then Jesus comes. But this gentleman says, before that, he reads something that's going to happen after the Great Tribulation. But he concludes it means that they are going to be in heaven before. So that's the understanding that we have today. The man just read Jesus saying that he, Jesus, will come after the Great Tribulation. And after that, he will send his angels to gather the chosen ones. Now, do you see the point? We understand now that all of Christ's anointed brothers will be in heaven with him before Armageddon starts. Paul describes what is going to happen. Paul describes it at 1 Thessalonians 4, explaining how we will be taken to heaven. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus describes it in Matthew 24, how he will return in power and great glory. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and a great glory. Paul describes how the event, what will happen in the event. He will make the great shout that dead in Christ will rise first. Those who are alive and did not, did not die together with the resurrected ones will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. That is Paul explaining. But Jehovah has not permitted Samuel her to see. And then John goes on to explain, Blessed are they who had part in the first resurrection. After Paul explained that the dead in Christ will rise first and be taken to heaven, blessed are they that have part in the first resurrection because they will rule and reign with Christ in heaven for 1,000 years after the great tribulation, after Jesus comes. And this nitwitted fellow telling people that Jehovah has not permitted them in the past to see what is written in the word. But no, no, Jehovah is permitting them to see. And then he reads so Jesus, the Son of God, speaks about what is going to happen after. And this nitwit is concluding that it means it's going to happen before. I tell you what Jehovah's Witnesses, until now, Jehovah is not permitting your leaders to see. Some things uh, Jehovah will not permit us to see, even though we read over it many, many times. But do you know what is tragic about all of this? This man who committed suicide, committed suicide because of something that began with Jeffrey Jackson, among the things with which it began, Jeffrey Jackson going to 
the Australian Royal Commission to deny what he has been told all along. I wrote a letter why I was stepping down. I was asked if I thought that the governing body was the mouthpiece and under direction from Jehovah God. I told him, watch the Australian Royal Commission. Uh, uh, that I think would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. Pre Jackson himself said that would be presumptuous. Their answer to that was, well, this man, they probably photoshopped and did video trickery to make him say that. And I said, I watched the official documentary on it. And that did not happen. He said those things. And so from then on, I quit going to the Kingdom Hall. Jeffrey Jackson caused this man to stumble. Do you want to hear what Stephen Litt has to say about that? Now this word picture of someone being stumbled is quite vivid, isn't it? We've all seen someone stumbled. In fact, we've all stumbled ourselves at times. And there are varying degrees of consequences. For example, a person can stumble, quickly recover, and continue almost uneventfully down the path. Or a person can stumble, fall, break a bone, eventually they recover, but only after extensive therapy. Then again, a person can stumble, fall, hit his head, never recover, becoming a casualty. Well, the situation is similar when one is stumbled spiritually. So Jeffrey Jackson caused this man to stumble. And when he lost faith in the organization and left, his life became such a miserable hell that he eventually ended it himself. My whole life has been turned upside down because I questioned the doctrine and the procedures of the Watchtower Bible Tract Society. So, which of you Jehovah's Witness out there today believe that you can safely reject what Samuel Hurge just told you? How many of you could have rejected what they told you 10 years ago even though Jehovah did not permit them to see? Jehovah did not permit them to see, but they told you. And what would be the consequences if you chose not to accept what they told you 10 years ago that Jehovah did not allow them to see? You would be disfellowshipped. You would be accused of having apostate tendencies, you will be disfellowshipped and you would be shunned by every Jehovah's Witness that you know. If you dared, if you dared to reject what Jehovah did not reveal to them, what Jehovah did not permit them to see, if you dared to reject it, your life would become a living hell. And now, they have revealed to you more nonsense, more falsehood, more false teaching. Would you dare to not accept it? Would, can you dare as a Jehovah's Witness to conclude that what Jesus said about before is correct, uh, sorry, after. What Jesus said about after is correct and what some, this gentleman is telling you about before is wrong. Dare you? 
this organization is satanic to the core is a statement I have used several times in the past on this channel. It is Satan who is going about seeking whom he may devour, not Christ. The only thing one of the most pleasant things in this, these, terrible time, these terrible times when cost of living is going up and there's war in Ukraine and children are being murdered in the United States and people are being murdered left, right and center in my country when times are hard, when I am ill. A dark period in my life. Do you know what is beautiful? The blessed hope. The blessed hope that Jesus gives to us that all of this is going to end. And that he's coming back. That he's gone to prepare a place for you. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. John 1, John 14, sorry, 1 to 3. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's why Jesus died. This organization is telling you, no, it is not for you. And feeding you with lies to destroy that hope given to you through the very blood of Christ. And I am saying to you, Jehovah's Witnesses, what I have said to you over and over and over and over and over again. Stop listening to the governing body and start listening to Christ. Stop listening to the governing body who is reading after and telling you before. And listen to Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you.